Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. I asked Pastor Nick to sing that this morning because I want to talk to you today on water baptism and its significance. Uh, I want to direct your attention this morning to Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 3. And that song tells us that it's the blood that saves us and not the water. Jesus is our perfect example, and if Jesus was baptized, then we need to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, and so we need to follow the Lord in water baptism. I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, beginning in verse 13. It says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer or allow it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John Baptist saw Jesus walking down that dusty road that day, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. So it's the blood that saves us and not the water. But this morning I want to talk to you on water baptism and its significance. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this special day in the lives of so many people. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in our midst. And it's your amazing grace that saves us, Lord. And we're so thankful that you're our Father. And, Lord, that the sin issue has been dealt with. And, Lord, if there's anyone watching by live stream or anyone under the sound of my voice today that does not know the peace of God that passeth all understanding, if they have not been born again and regenerated by the power of the blood, we pray, Lord, today will be their day. And they will pray that simple prayer and invite the Lord Jesus in their heart to be saved. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Water baptism is one of the two God-given ordinances in the New Testament church. There's Holy Communion and there's water baptism. And tonight, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. We're going to do it a little differently from what we have done in the past. And we're going to use the goblet and we're going to allow you to break the bread and dip it into the fruit of the vine and take that. We've, we've done that a couple of times, and the people here, they really like that. So that's the way we're going to observe Holy Communion tonight. And I invite you to come back and be a part of that very important service. But uh, water baptism, we're not saved by water baptism, and we're not saved by taking Holy Communion either. We take Holy Communion and we follow the Lord in water baptism because we are saved. And we do that in obedience to the Lord's command. The importance of water baptism is made very clear in the Scriptures. It is an outward expression of an inward work that has already taken place in our heart because of God's amazing grace. It takes place in the heart of the fully justified Believer, We are made just as if we had never sinned. That's the power of Calvary's blood. I used to be a sinner, but I'm saved by grace. Glory to God. He took my place. On the cross where he died, my sins to erase. I used to be a sinner, but I'm saved. I'm saved. Praise God. I'm saved by grace. Can I get a witness out there? Somebody go on and praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's not the water that saves us, but it's God's grace. Look at Ephesians 2 and 8. It's by grace and by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If water baptism could uh, save us, then the thief on the cross, if it could, he would have been in big trouble. So... He didn't have the opportunity to get baptized in water. Amen. He was saved simply because he believed. And the Lord Jesus said, 
after he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. See, this was an act of, of true repentance. It takes godly sorrow and godly repentance to be saved. And once that takes place, then you are born of the Spirit because worldly sorrow worketh repentance unto death. Godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. So it's the blood that saves us. And, and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That was an act of true repentance. And Jesus said, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. So it's the blood we see that saves us and not the water. But we follow the Lord in water baptism simply to fulfill all righteousness. When you are born again and when you are saved, there's an inward work which cannot be observed by the natural eye. But when you are baptized in water, it is an outward witness. It is a testimony that you have died to sin. You have died to the world. You have died to the lust of the flesh and that you have made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Jesus, he came to John that day, and he's walking down the dusty road, and I like to think about John when he sees Jesus coming, because everybody knew John was a prophet. And, and they asked him, said, are you the one, or do we look for another? And he was always pointing people to Jesus. That's what a real preacher does. He points people to Jesus. John said, I must decrease that he may increase. And when he saw him coming, he said, Behold, look, stop, think about it. There's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the whole world. Amen. And when Jesus asked John to baptize him, John said, No, Lord, I need to be baptized of you. But Jesus said, John, you need to do this in order for all righteousness to be fulfilled. And when Jesus came up out of that water, the heavens blasted open, the Holy Ghost descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove. It remained on him, and the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus is our perfect example, and Jesus was baptized in water to fulfill all righteousness. And so if you get an opportunity, and I get an opportunity, then we are to follow the Lord in water baptism. So first of all, who should be baptized? Well, every born-again believer, those that have experienced a new birth, they are the people who are to be baptized. When you get saved, there's a little inward voice that says you're born again. Look at Romans 8, 16. The Bible says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So I'm not talking about shaking the preacher's hand. I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about good works. We're all to do those things. But I'm talking about an inward work where something takes place within your heart and you know that you're saved. Hallelujah. Thank God that you can know that you're saved. I don't wonder if I'm saved or not. I was as mean as a junkyard dog. I'll just tell it like it was. But when I got saved, there was such a dramatic change. Everything started singing. How many know what I'm talking about? You knew because of the witness of the Holy Ghost that you were born again and no one could tell you otherwise. An amazing change had taken place in your heart and in your life. Those who have experienced this inward work of the Spirit of God. See, it's the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. We're going to, the Holy Ghost is the one that baptizes you into, G, into Jesus. Then we, the preacher and others, we baptize you in water. And then Jesus, he baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire. And that's the baptism John said, I need that baptism. Well, John never got that baptism. He was baptized from his mother's womb, but he didn't get what we got. We got what we got after Calvary. Hallelujah. We got an amazing change in our hearts. And look at what Jesus said in Mark 16, 16. He says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So if you believe, if you've been born again, then you belong to Jesus, 
and you should follow the Lord's example and be baptized. That's part of the Great Commission given in Mark 16. Listen to uh, the Great Commission given in Matthew 28 and 19. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So every born-again believer should be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. There are some people, they're oneness, and they believe in baptism in the name of Jesus only. So when I baptize people, I say, in the name of Jesus, or by be healed in the name of Jesus, be free in the name of Jesus, I baptize you, my brother, my sister, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the name of Jesus. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I got all the bases there. And that way no one can say, well, you weren't baptized in the name of Jesus only. Well, you can't show me in the scriptures where it ever says, be baptized in the name of Jesus only. It says, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Repent. What Peter said, be baptized in the name of Jesus. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what I'm saying is we want to follow the Lord's example and go all the way with what the Lord has prepared for us. I want it all. How, how many of you want half of your inheritance when your parents leave? Anybody in here, you just want a fourth or a half? Or, do you want it all? If you want it all, show me your hand. Come on. Everybody, I, I got some people got no hands? Come on. Everybody, you want all of your inheritance? I do. I want everything. I want everything that Jesus paid for, and I want to make sure that I preach it all so people can get it all. Amen. But uh, you need to be baptized if you've been born again. So secondly, who should be baptized? Well, if a person backslides and they go away from the Lord for a long period of time and they come back to the Lord, then you may want to consider doing your first works over. Look at what Jesus said in Revelation 2 and 4. He said, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Not lost, you just left it. But look at verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly. will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thy repent. So if a person goes away from God, and they stay out in sin for a long period of time, and then they come back to the Lord, they may want to consider doing their first works over. You do this as a public witness before human beings that you have repented and that you are now living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people, you know, it could be a matter of controversy, but if you really want to go to heaven, I promise you something, you won't care how many times you've been baptized in water. Just do it to fulfill all righteousness. Do your first works over. And then when the devil, the accuser of the brethren, he comes and he tries to tell you, you're not saved. You know you went back. You did that terrible sin. You can take the devil and you can tell him, I did my first works over. Aren't you glad that God has one angel, just one angel, he's going to come down, he's going to take the devil, and he's going to cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. I'll be so glad when that devil's mouth is shut up and he's locked up during the thousand-year millennial reign and he cannot accuse us of anything. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But he wants to accuse you and he wants to accuse me. But follow the Lord. Follow the Word of God. And my Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So we're seeking God. Amen. So, secondly, why should a Christian be baptized? Well, we do it to fulfill all righteousness. We do it to follow the Lord's example. We do it in obedience to the Lord's command. I just read you all of that. When we go down in the water of baptism, we are saying to the world, I am dead to sin. I have been crucified with Christ. The water is also symbolic of the fact that we are planted together in the likeness of his death, and we have been raised in the newness of his life. Look, look at Romans 6 and 5. Paul said, for if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. I love that process of identification. We are identified with Christ in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, 
and we are identified with him in his descent, ascension. And the Bible says we are seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you there's a whole lot more to being a Christian than some people realize. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we, I, I preach and I make sure that I'm not giving you pablum when you come to this church. You're getting the word of God, something that will free you. And tonight we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. We do that because the Lord says, as often as you do this, do you remember me? Until I come. So we remember his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and the fact he's coming again. It's the meal that heals. Come back if you need healing. Praise God and get healed tonight. Just do it because the Lord will bless you if you just get revelation of what's going on. So the identification with Christ is the secret to a victorious Christian life. Look at Colossians 2 and 12, what Paul says. Buried with him, with Jesus, by, in baptism, whereof also you are risen with him through faith. I love this, of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. God raised him, and God operated on our heart through the surgical tool of the Holy Ghost. Every time a Christian holds his hands up and says, praise the Lord, that's why I'm a praise. The Bible says he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. Every time I hold my hands up and say, glory to God. Every time you hold your hands up and say, praise the Lord. The devil looks and he says, oh my God, that's one of those Christians. I see their heart has been circumcised with the surgical tool of the Holy Ghost. If they ever realize who they are, I'm in big trouble because they've got power and authority in the name of Jesus. Somebody, go and praise somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's a whole lot more to what happened when Jesus died on that cross and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and was seated at the right hand of his majesty on high with all authority in heaven and earth in his name. Put the devil under his feet, made his enemy his footstool. So come back and I'll preach to you about how if you're just a little two in the body of Christ, the devil is under your feet. Hallelujah. Keep him there. Let him know who you are. Amen. Look at this, what the Bible says you should do after you're saved. Acts twenty two sixteen. 16. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So we're not to wash away our sins by being baptized, as some would teach. We are to wash away our sins by calling on the name of the Lord. You see that scripture? Be baptized, but wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. I want you to get the point that it's the blood that saves us. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses, flushes out all the filth of sin. And so the water is not the cleansing factor. It's the proving factor. It's to let everybody know that your sins are washed away. That Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. And that you love him supremely. And that you're doing your very best to follow him and to obey his word in everything that you do. Look at what Paul said in, in Titus 3 and 5. He said, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself is the gift of God. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. Woo! He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the newing of the Holy Ghost. So it's not the washing of the water. It's the washing of the blood and regeneration through the Spirit of God which washes and which saves. It's the blood. The blood. Thank God for the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing, 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 nothing. Praise God, nothing 
but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank God. See, when, when you get that straight, that it's the blood, and if you get that straight in your heart, then you will realize that it's God's mercy and God's amazing grace that saved you. Oh, I believe in good works. I, I believe in tithing. I believe in joining the church. I believe in fellowship with people of like precious faith. But none of those things, I believe in water baptism. I believe in Holy Communion. But none of those things can save you. It's the blood. It took pure blood. It took God's blood. It took sinless, perfect, pure, holy blood to wash away our sins. Thank God for the blood. Amen. So we're not saved by water baptism. We are saved to be baptized in water. We do it to fulfill all righteousness. We do it to follow the Lord's example. We do it in obedience to the Lord's command. We do it to say to the world, I'm dead to sin. I'm through with all of that. I belong to Jesus. So we've got, I think um, I'll start with the, the young kids. I, how should I start this thing? Amen. How many out there are ready to be baptized in water? Let me see you. I've got a list of about 10 people. All right. Amen. Well, I'm going to just go right down my list. How's that? Amy, you signed up first if you would come. Amen. I, I need some ushers, and we are going to baptize you in, in water. And uh, you go out this door to your right once you get up here, and then there'll be people to direct you, and uh, you'll need uh, your change of clothes and your towels. But we'll have people to assist you from beginning to end. And uh, you would just come on, Amy, right here. This is Amy Williams. Amy came and gave a heart to the Lord here, and we just thank God. She says, I want to follow the Lord in water baptism, and uh, she joined the church recently, and if you just turn around, you can sit down right here on, there you go, amen, hallelujah. Amy, I just want to ask you a question. You uh, have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. And you want to follow him today in water baptism? Yes. Amen. And Brother Wood, if you would come in and hold my mic for me. Just hold it right here in my mouth. If you would, Amy, if you put your hand over your chin and over your nose like this. There you go. Amy, upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, in the name of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank God. We've got some young people that uh, they uh, want to follow the Lord, and they're not sure about this, so I want you to watch this and just to see, you know, that we're going to take good care of you. Uh, Crystal Arispe, if you would come at this time, and then she'll be followed by her husband, Lazaro. And we just thank God for those two children they're going to dedicate in the near future. But uh, the Lord, he's been working here, and thank God for the inward work that has taken place in the hearts of people. And this is their outward expression that they are saved and they belong to Jesus. Amy and Crystal are of the same family. So if the family members, that w if you would stand, let me recognize you. Just stand so everybody can see the family members that are here. Amen. If you, Brother Robert and others, amen. But we thank God for that. And uh, Crystal, on uh, do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. And you want to follow his example in water baptism today? Yes. Upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, 
In the name of Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Lazaro, if you want to make your way on up here. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Lazaro, uh, you uh, have accepted the Lord as your personal Savior. Yes. And it's your desire today to follow his example in water baptism. Yes. All right. My brother, in the name of Jesus, on your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It's a big one there. Hallelujah. All right, Miss Haley Fellows. All right. I want the family to stand, all the family members of Haley. Amen. We've had her for a long time. Amen. We all love Haley. She's the... She loves her pastor, I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't believe I ever come in here that she didn't come up and hug me. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to take care of you. You don't have to worry. You trust me. You're cold. All right. <laughs> it's all right. You reckon Jesus got cold that day in the muddy Jordan River? He probably did, didn't he? Amen. You want to follow the Lord, don't you? All right. I know you do. I want to ask you a question. Haley, does Jesus Christ live in your heart? Yes. And he's your personal Savior? Yes. And today, you want to follow him in water baptism? Haley, in the name of Jesus, upon your profession of faith that Jesus is your Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Katie. This is Haley's sister, Katie. Her grandmother's here today, Sister Doris Thorne, to, to witness this. Amen. Andrew, he got baptized. Their brother, stand up, Andrew. Amen. He got baptized, I think, last, last time. Amen. Amen. All right, Katie. You relaxed yet? Okay. Uh, have you been saved? Yes. And Jesus lives in your heart? Yes. You want to follow the Lord, amen? Yes. All right. Katie, upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Great Commission, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Michaela Evans. Amen. Not cold, is it? <laughs> nah. Like taking a cool bath. Amen. 
Amen. Michaela, you've been with us for quite a while. Have you been born again? Yes. Does Jesus live in your heart? Yes. You love the Lord, don't you? Yes. And you want to follow him in water baptism? Hey, it's wonderful when you get a family together like this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn around and look at the camera. <laughs> Just a shot before we do this thing. Michaela, upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Great Commission, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. All of the family stand up there. All of my grandmother came. Amen. Yeah, go on and stand up. Everybody, all the family members. Yeah, all of the family members stand up of, of the Michaela. Amen. Hallelujah. Look around you. We got a big family. Amen. Amen. Rylan Ellis. Where's Rylan? There he is. Now, I want somebody to help him down the steps. Come here, Rylan. Come over here, buddy. Before you get up there, come over here. Bring him, bring him over here first. I want you all to help him now. Show him how you get off the steps, and be careful now. All right, come on back up. Help him up. Most of the time, he doesn't do that. He leaps way out there. So make sure he doesn't take a leap today, okay? Amen. I asked Rylan a few weeks ago, I said, Rylan, I brought him up here, I said, uh, you want to be baptized in water? He said, yes, I do. I said, why? He said, because I want to. <laughs> Rylan, buddy, we're really proud of you. You know that? Look at Pastor. You can look up here. Does Jesus live in your heart? Yes. All right. You love the Lord? Yes. All right. You want to follow the Lord in water baptism today? Mm -hmm. All right. Just say it. Say, I just want to. Want to. Want to. <laughs> Rylan, upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Great Commission, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. I want Morgan Lloyd to come, and Pastor Nick's going to come, and he's going to baptize her. This is a special moment for them. I'll let her, and he can give his own testimony about it. Amen. Well, this is a very special day. I know if, um, you've seen Morgan come with Taylor. Um, I haven't done this publicly, but... Um, you know, she's my cousin, but I, I think of her, she's my sister. Um, so we uh, grew up a uh, mile from each other, and when we weren't a mile apart, we were another mile down the street terrorizing my grandma and my grandpa our whole young life. So, um, But it's been awesome uh, to see Morgan grow in and, and her, and her faith and uh, accept the Lord, and, and, um, and she came to me one time and I think before we even set this date, she just came to me and said, I want to be baptized, and I, I want you to baptize me. So um, that's why this morning is special. So, Morgan, um, you profess the Lord to be um, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior of your life. And, um, upon that, I want to baptize you now, so go ahead and put your hand... In G the name of Jesus, 
upon your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want the entire family to stand for Morgan, everybody that came up. Look at that. Give them a big hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Remember the Creator in the day of thy youth. Amen. It's a beautiful scripture. I want Brother Philip Pearson to come, and I want Jose's family to stand, if you would. <laughs> Jose is very special to us. He went to Camp Arama. I'll let Brother Philip tell the story. Because this boy right here, let me tell you, this young man, stand back, let, let him see his smile. Look at, that fi- look at that Jesus smile. Look at that. Do you see that Jesus smile? Yeah. Amen. Jose, as a call on your life, buddy, and we're going to keep our eye on you, and we want you to walk close to the Lord. Brother Philip. Jose had never been camping before, so we took him, broke him in right. We took him to a four-day camp out at Camp Arama. First time, and he was great. He, he had Andrew with him. Andrew was on the front row there. They were buddies and stuck together. But the first night, every night at Camp Arama, we have a service. And the first night, I think they said 60 boys. I counted closer to 70 boys went down to be saved. First night. That was just the first night. Jose was one of those boys. And needless to say, I saw, when I saw him get out of the pew, I went around the other way and met him up there, prayed with him. The Lord saved him. And I thank God for that. Uh, I wouldn't take anything for that. And Jose, has, uh, he came back in Bible school, and he wasn't sure. He wasn't 100% sure. So Pastor Jonathan gave him an opportunity. Jose said, let me do it again just to be sure. <laughs> Now, if all Christians wanted to be sure that much, what a change it would make in the church, huh? But I, I was so pleased to do that. And now, I'm not an ordained minister, but since the pastor is going to be here right beside me and help and supervise this, he wanted me to uh, perform the baptism of Jose. I've done this for one of my other boys. I don't remember which one it was right now, but, uh, but thank God for... Saving grace. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jose, you are saved. You, Jesus, Lord of your life. Yes. Yes. That's all I need to hear. All right, now get your hand over your nose. By your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his name, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it was Andrew. Was it Andrew? Andrew that went and um, found his brother Peter and brought him to the Lord. Jose, he brought one of his friends and he got saved. He did. A little boy from Florida, he got saved the same night as Jose. He came up with Jose. God bless him. Amen. 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 He got him to go to the Camp of Rome and carried him to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Pastor Nick, amen. There are some other young people here and uh, that they have not followed the Lord in uh, water baptism. I'm going to leave this up. We are very thankful to First PH Church here uh, in town that they allow us to borrow this baptistry. Very kind of them and uh, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And uh, we're going to leave it up through Wednesday night. If there's anyone else that you have not followed the Lord in water baptism. And if you want to be baptized, I'll change the entire order of that Wednesday night service if I have to in order to get you baptized. Because... Okay. Yes. Yes, if someone else is ready, please come on, Maxine. Amen.
Amen. Let us see that big Jesus smile, Sister Maxine. Amen. Amen. The Lord has done a wonderful work in Sister Maxine's heart. And uh, Sister Clara Jones here, she, we got what we call the war room here. Have y'all seen the movie The War Room yet? If you haven't, please go see that movie. I've seen it twice. I saw it earlier this year. And uh, you, you want to see it. It's a story about a, a lady's marriage that's in trouble. And this elderly prayer warrior teaches her how to fight in prayer and tells her to get into her prayer closet. And she names the prayer closet The War Room. And I'll let you watch it to get the rest of it. But Sister Clara Jones, stand up, Sister Clara. Yeah. Amen. One of our mothers here in the church. She brings them to the war room, my, my office. And uh, we've had two of them filled with the... Got another one on the list. We've had two of them come here. They didn't know what the Holy Ghost was, I don't think, the way, way we teach them. Both of them baptized in the Holy Ghost with initial evidence, speaking in tongues, back there in my office. And... And uh, we just counsel people, and uh, the Lord, he has the answer. Whatever you're going through, I can tell you one thing. Jesus is the lover of your soul. Jesus Christ loves you. He cares about you. And when he saved me, I knew I was called to preach as a little boy. I didn't want to do this thing. But I tell you, something got a hold of me. He radically changed my life. And he says, freely you have received, freely give. And we're just so thankful for the people in this church and the people, their gifts and how God is using the people here to bring in the harvest. There's a hurting world at that church. And some of them are now in here. I don't hurt like I used to. How about you? There's been a change in this life of mine since the Lord laid his hand on me. Go on, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Maxine, we're so delighted to have you with us today. I need to ask you these questions. Have you been born again? Yes. Yes. And Jesus is your Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's got a big smile now, but I get a hard time getting her to say, yes, glory. Yes. 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 All right. Amen. Well, Sister Maxine, upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord, if you put your hand over your chin, put this, this one, one over your chin and cup your nose with your thumb, and there you go. That's good. Amen. Upon your profession of faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. That's number 10. Amen. That's a perfect number, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Give all these people a great big hand. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. So it's the blood that washes away our sin and the water. It is an outward witness of an inward work that has already taken place in our heart. Thank God for the blood and thank God for the witness. I want to invite you to come back tonight. We're going to take Holy Communion. It's the meal that heals. There's more in that meal than a lot of people realize. And uh, we're going to celebrate it because the Lord, we're going to follow Him in His example. These are the two ordinances. I want us to stand and sing this song with Pastor Nick and Taylor. It says, I give myself away. And during this song, make that fresh commitment. Lord, I give myself away. And if the ushers would escort Lazaro and Crystal out to the Welcome Sun, I would appreciate it. Give myself away. Oh, give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Yeah. 
Anybody that needs special prayer during this time, the altar's open. You're watching by live stream. You've never been saved. Brother Baker, if you zoom in on me. You get saved by believing in your heart that Jesus Christ bore your sins. You believe that he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Lord, I give myself away. Come into my heart. Wash my sins away. Lord, I receive you as my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Sing it. 